This is an equipment kind. Equipment is one of the oldest pieces of the game. A lot has changed since it first released back in the earlier stages. Today's video will be covering the best overall sets for each of the main troop types, which miscellaneous pieces are better than those set pieces, and the best epic and below pieces to help get you a little bit of extra value on your spare marches, to get better trades, and maybe even get those extra legendary sets a run for their money. Without further ado, let's get started. First, let's talk about the legendary cavalry gear. These are end game pieces and are generally some of the last items you'll build to complete your set. But first, let's talk about the actual base West Wasteland set. First, the Wasteland Helm gives you 11% defense, and the gloves give you an additional 7.5. The chest and boots both give health, with the chest giving 11% and the boots giving 7.5%. Lastly, the weapon and leg pieces both give attack, with the weapon giving 20% and the leg pieces giving 11 This comes out to 18.5% health in defense and 31% attack. The set bonuses give 3% health, 3% counterattack damage, and 5% defense at 2, 4, and 6 pieces. Of these set bonuses, my recommendation is to go minimum 2 out of 6, and 4 out of 6 is good as well if you're not looking to build the Season of Conquest gear. Now that we've talked about where we want to go 2 out of 6 or 4 out of 6, let's talk about the alternative gear options. For weapons, Sacred Dominion is the Season of Conquest weapon. It gives an additional 5% attack to 25%. A notable alternative is Trial of the Lost Kingdom, which we won't really cover in detail here since it is purchasable rather than buildable, and it gives you 15% defense, but it's not as crazy good as it may seem on paper. Of the alternatives, I do prefer Sacred Dominion as a cavalry player, but both the Sacred Dominion and the Wasteland item are acceptable for the end stages depending on what your main troop type is. Next, similarly for Helms, the Khan Helm Season of Conquest item gives 15% Cavalry Defense instead of the 11% of the base item. Again, this is a Season of Conquest item, so you get more defense, but it's more tuned to Cavalry specific players. And if you are an Archer or Infantry player, you are just fine to run the Wasteland Helm and the Wasteland Weapon. This is a great way to get your additional two to get the four out of six set bonus to get the counter attack bonus damage as well. Next, we're onto the chest pieces. The Wasteland Chest is one of my favorite chest pieces and the alternative of Shadow Legion's Retribution is just really bad overall and I don't recommend any players really building it in earnest. Meaning you really should just keep the Wasteland Chest and the first of your six towards the set bonuses. Next, with the gloves, you have the Wasteland Gloves at 7.5% defense, and the alternative is Navar's Control at 8% cavalry health. Out of the two of these, I would really prefer Navar's Control, and this is the first piece in the list where I would completely say replace the original four, no matter if you are a cav main or not, as 8% health is well worth the loss of a point in the set bonuses. And you only need the two out of six. Similarly, the Wasteland leg pieces are pretty bad, and Ash of Dawn is just a better overall choice. So using Navars and Ash of Dawn will place you at a maximum of four out of six set bonus, but it also comes with a 20% massive health bonus instead of attack and defense of lower amounts. Lastly, the boots are quite exceptional on their own with 7.5% health and are one of my favorite boot pieces in the entire game, and they're worth keeping in the set. So in summary, you have two main routes. First, if you go full Season of Conquest with Ash of Dawn and Navar's Control with Sacred Dominion and the Khan Helm, you get a total of 38.5% health, 25% attack, and 15% defense, as well as the bonus 2 out of 6, 3% troop health, without any expertises. Alternatively, you can run without the Season of Conquest items and get 38.5% health, 20% attack, and 11% defense, and the 3% troop health, but get an additional 3% counterattack. 
which is not a must have, but it comes with an easier expertise, lower material cost versus seasonal conquest items, and similar results in a good portion of situations. In the end, the decision is yours, as both are excellent options for overall setups. Next, we are on to infantry gear. Like the cavalry gear, the infantry gear is fairly endgame centered, but there are definitely goals that are worthwhile to work towards. First, let's talk about the full set stats. The full sets only give attack and defense, with the legs, chest, and weapon giving 11, 11, and 20% attack respectively, giving a total of 42% attack on three items. While the helm, gloves, and boots give 11, 7.5, and, and 7.5 and defense, totaling 26% defense. This set bonuses are 3% defense, 10% march speed, and 5% attack at 2, 4, and 6 pieces. This is handily the worst full set in the game for legendaries, and infantry sets tend to mostly rely on offset pieces due to the terrible value. And really the only goal I set, especially for garrisons, is 2 out of 6. Next let's talk alternative pieces, as there are a lot of them. Like the cab weapon, the infantry weapon is the same stat, just a higher percentage with 25% attack instead of 20. Has similar pros and cons, increased floor for increased material cost, and ultimately the decision is up to you in terms of preference and main troop type. Similarly, the helm has the same situation as the cabs as well, with an increased amount of attack, or defense rather, and increased costs, increased floor, but it all comes down to preference. And since you don't need multiple set bonuses, you can run this if you'd rather get more stat value. But next, let's talk about the chest piece. This is the first really major one. And the base chest piece for the Empire set is 11% attack. Hope Cloak is one of my favorite. It's actually the first legendary equipment piece I ever built. And it's 12% defense, which is a better stat and more stat amount, making it easily one of the best swaps for infantry, as you don't really need more attack, and you only need that 2 out of 6 bonus to really get maximum value. Next, for the gloves, it's essentially a wash, since the Empire gloves are the same 7.5% defense versus Sacred Crypt's 8% defense. At the end of the day, it comes down to whatever you want to go with. It's one of those swap it if you already have 2 out of 6 and you can't get the 4 out of 6 kind of choice. Next, for the leg piece, the overall Empire set gives you 11% attack, but you have Eternal Knight here, which is one of the better overall defensive pieces for infantry with 12% defense. It has the same thing as the Hope Cloak, where it is a better stat and more stat, so I highly recommend you swap it out as well. Lastly, on the boots, it's the same thing, where you get 7.5% defense on the Empire set, or Shio's Return gives 8%. So it really comes down to preference if you already have the two out of six. So if you decide to keep the overall empire set for the helm and the weapon, you can switch out the boots and the gloves for Shio's return and for sacred grips, or you can keep sacred grips and, Sh and Shio's return, switch them out for the empire set and switch the weapon and helm out for the season of conquest. But you have three basic setups. For those wanting the march speed for field mobility, Going 4 out of 6 with Hope Cloak and Eternal Knight and everything else being Empire gives 20% attack and 50% defense with an additional 3% defense and 10% march speed. For those who don't need the march speed, you can run the Season of Conquest with 2 out of 6. Set bonus giving you 25% attack and 54 defense with an additional 3% defense set bonus. Or you can run the set pieces there and run Shio's Return and Sacred Grips and you get 20% attack and 51% defense, which is similar, slightly less stats, but a lot more accessible and free to play friendly, as well as being less material intensive. Any of these three options are generally considered solid and good, but due to the lack of health or any other things in the set that aren't defense and attack, you could also consider using Gatekeeper Shield, especially if you're in the field to boost your trades. Last of the equipment sets, we have the Archer set. And this is probably one of the more well-designed sets for the actual archer pairings, as the miscellaneous pieces 
as you'll see, are not as impactful. So first let's go over the main set. The weapon gives you 20% defense, which is insanely useful. While the helm gives you 11% attack. The chest gives you 11% health. The gloves give you 7.5% attack. The legs give you 11% attack. And the boots lastly give you 7.5% defense. This makes the overall set stats 29.5% attack, 27.5% defense, and 11% health. The set bonuses at 2, 4, and 6 are 3% attack, 3% skill damage, and 5% health. This means you can get up to 16% health and 32.5% attack without an expertise if you use all 6. Next, let's go over the miscellaneouses. First, the Season of Conquest weapon is essentially quite similar to the original weapon, just at a higher stat, just like all the other sets. The Hydra's Blast gives you 25% defense instead of 20. Similarly, the Helm gives you 15% attack instead of the 11% attack of the base equipment piece. Both of these are really maybe Archer only, if that. And the Hydra's Blast is probably the best of the two. That being said, the set bonuses for the actual set pieces are really, really effective at the 5% health, 3% skill damage, and 2 and 3% attack. And I recommend a minimum of 4 out of 6. So if you use the two Season of Conquest items, I recommend keeping Dragon's Breath for everything else. Next, in the other miscellaneous pieces, the gloves have the exact same stat, just at 8% instead of 7.5%, so I don't really recommend you replacing it. The leg plates similarly have attack, but it's 12% instead of 11. Again, I don't really recommend you replacing it. The chest similarly is 12% health instead of 11%, which again, it comes down to preference, but you should really look to get four out of six. If you wanna get some extra points because you can't really get the dragon's breath blueprints, that's one thing, but you should really strive to get four out of six or six out of six overall when it comes to the archer sets. And lastly, the boots are just really bad with the only one that doesn't really line up with the archer defense being archer attack, which really doesn't do a lot for you. So I don't recommend you ever using this one. It's one of the worst legendary pieces overall. So really I recommend four out of six or just going for the full set when it comes to archers because the set as its base is very good and you don't have alternative pieces that give better stat value. The last set we will talk about is the leadership set. This is a not very used set just because you don't really get a lot of straight up stat versus what you can get in going with your main troop type. So if you're an infantry mix, going with infantry gear is better. However, in the case that you're using truly mixed units like Heracleus Lapu Lapu or Heracleus YSS, the leadership gear is the way to go. So I'll quickly go over the stats. The weapon gives 15% attack. The helm, again, gives it more attack at 8%. The chest and gloves both give defense, with the chest giving 8%, and the gloves giving 6 While the legs and boots have the same pattern, with the legs giving 8% health, and the boots giving 6% health. The legs and boots are probably the most usable outside of leadership as 8% health is super useful on the leg plates and it's a viable replacement for the infantry defense leg plates and the infantry boots to give you 14% health for infantry units, which is super useful. The set bonuses give you 3% troop defense, 3% skill damage reduction, and 5% troop health at 2, 4, and 6. These are useful, and if you're using leadership, you want all three. But if you're using these as filler spots, like for infantry, and you're just using a piece or two, the two out of four out of six will give great value with 3% defense, especially in these two, because then you get 14% health and 3% defense to put on whatever you happen to want to use it on. That being said, for example, the archers won't make good use of, or the cavalry won't make good use of this because they already have health on both those spots. Whereas the archer gear could then replace the 11% attack and 7.5% defense with 14% health, which could be useful. 
and the infantry could replace their attack and defense in those spots with health as well. So you'll see this in archers and infantry, but less so for cavalry due to the fact that it's not quite as good a value. Now that we've gone over the legendary tiers, let's go for a little more free to play friendly. In this section, I'm going to cover sets that you can use with no legendaries that give you a ton of value for each troop type. First, we're going to cover cavalry. For cavalry, the best weapon that's not legendary is Heart of the Saint. 13% defense is super useful. Next, you're going to follow that up with the Expedition Warhelm, which gives you 6% defense and a blue, which is super valuable. When we get down to the chest piece, the best piece overall is the Dark Lord's Blessing with an 8% defense bonus, which is, again, quite valuable for the fact that it's only an epic. Next, for gloves, we're going to go with Eset Sufferance, as it gives you 3% attack, which is kind of mediocre, but 3% health, which is pretty valuable. For the leg pieces, we're going to go with Gladiator, as the 8% health is super, super valuable. And it's one of the few really solid health pieces for cavalry that is below legendary. And lastly, for the boots, there isn't a lot of great selection. But we're going to go with the Windswept, as it gives you some march speed, but also gives you 2.5% health. If you build this set, you get 13%, you get a total of 27% defense, 3% attack, and 13.5% health, as well as a small 3% march speed. Also, if you want to go for more mobility, you can swap in the full four windswept items. You get less overall stats, but you gain a total of 16% move speed, which is super useful if you're trying to gather runes, farm hunt, or do anything that involves a lot of mobility. Next. For infantry, we're going to start back at the top. The best overall infantry weapon that is not legendary is the Gatekeeper Shield, which gives a massive 8% health. Next, when we get to the helm, there's less good value items, but we're going to go with the Windswept Helm. Next, similarly for the chest piece, there isn't a lot that gives you good because the 8% attack isn't super useful here. So we're going to go with the Windswept Breastplate, which gives you 4.5% defense and that nice move speed. Next, for the gloves, again, not a lot. You can use the 5.5% infantry defense here on Seth's Brutality, but I prefer the Windswept because the infantry health is probably more useful, and the march speed is definitely also very valuable. Next, when we get to the leg plates, we finally get away from the Windswept and go with Kerouac's Humility. The 8% health is super great, and it's one of the best overall pieces in the leg plates for infantry in general and then lastly for the feet we go back to the windswept as the two and a half percent defense is probably the best overall in slot there are some other options like scarlet hounds which gives four percent health but the mobility is probably better for the field overall this set gives you 18 and a half percent health which is pretty good seven and a half percent or seven percent defense flat six and a half percent attack and 16 percent move speed which is actually really great value and most of these are blue too so they're very very free to play friendly lastly for archers we're going to start back up at the top and the best archer weapon is golden age with a 13 percent defense next for the helm we're going to go with one of the better non-legendary sets in the revival helm at seven and a half percent defense for the chest piece we will also use the revival set because it's just really good value and there's not a lot else going you can use Commander's Heavy Armor for the 6% health, too, if you just want raw stats. And this is a super underrated piece, too, that I think is really, really useful. Next, for the gloves, we're going to keep on the Revival Train with the Revival Gauntlets. And it's really pretty much the only good piece here. You get only attack here, only attack here. So really, you just get the better use going for the set bonus, even though you're only getting attack. You get the 2 out of 4 set bonus when you pair it with the helm, even if you decide to use the commander's heavy plate. Nextly, for the feet leg pieces, we're going to go with Revival again. 7.5% defense. Super useful. Not a lot else going for archers at this slot that isn't a legendary. So it is definitely a Revival set piece here. And lastly, on the feet, we will actually go with Flame Treads, which gives 5.5% health. For the main picks I gave here, if you use all of them, you get 31% defense, 
5.5% health and 15% attack, which is very respectable. But you could also switch out for others. Now that we've talked about free to play friendly sets, let's talk about the last major piece of equipment, and that's accessories. There are a lot of accessories. And we'll really keep this discussion just to the legendaries because they're the end game pieces. And when it comes to the end game, the conversation really starts and ends with the ring and the horn. These are the two best accessories overall because they just cover so many good situations. The 50% bonus is all damage here. And it can trigger once every 5 seconds. So you can get 2 seconds of uptime every 5 seconds. A 40% uptime potential of a 50% damage bonus is super crazy. Similarly, a 30% chance to gain 50 rage means more skills, more skills with more damage. These two pieces synchronize super, super well. And because of that, they're pretty much a staple of every rally, every garrison, every setup. Because it's just good value. There are a few alternatives. Greatest Glory and Vengeance are great ones with 5% more normal damage and 8% more counterattack damage. Both these are good against Swarm. Both these are really good with Gorgo because she does really good with her normal damage. And it's just a good option too. Dagger is good for the field or good when you are targeting garrisons or 1v1. Because the 5% health can stack up to a 15% health debuff, which can essentially negate an enemy an enemy's health, two best health pieces in their equipment, which is super good. Lastly, the web is also used in the field with a 30% chance to reduce defense by 4% and bard speed but cavalry by 8, which stacks up to 12% defense and 24% march speed. I'm not as huge on this because I'd rather just have the value of the ring and the horn, but if you don't want to build four rings and four horns, you could also build the web, but I just think you get better value with the ring and the horn. And there aren't really many situations where the ring and the horn aren't good and greatest glory and vengeance aren't good to the point that you need the dagger or the web. So really those are going to be the main four, ring and horn majority, with some small niches with greatest glory and vengeance. Lastly, as we begin to wrap up our equipment discussion, let's talk about when to switch gear and how to compare two pieces of gear so that you're always ready for the latest gear release or to upgrade your existing gear. First, anything epic and below dismantles for the same cost that it took to build it. Meaning if you build the wrong epic gear, you can get the material back, you just lose out on the gold and the blueprint. This makes it great for you to experiment and learn as you'll lose out on some golden blueprints, but not much else. This also means pre-legendary, you don't have to hoard materials to save up and build a legendary. You can just save up and when you're ready, dismantle and build the next one. Next, to compare two pieces of gear, you want to compare the stat of your main troop type. To compare, you can use what I call attack equivalent. So, as a general proportion, I use this to determine how good each stat is relative to one another based on the weakest stat. So of the three stats, attack, defense, and health, attack is the weakest, defense is the middle, and health is the best. So in this case, we'll convert everything to what roughly the same amount of attack would be needed. So for example, for every 1% attack, about 1% or 1% defense, every, we need about 1.5% attack. And for every 1% health, you need about 3-4% to attack to get the same results. To do this comparison, you'll just take each stat that's not attack, multiply by their attack equivalency. For example, if one piece gives you 10% defense, while another gives you 6% health, the 10% defense item is worth about 15% attack equivalent, while the second health item is between 18 and 24% attack equivalent. In this case, even though the equipment has lower amount of stat, it has much better value. This is not the be all end all, but it's an excellent rule of thumb to quickly compare these equipment pieces as well as armaments and commander kits. Ultimately, with stats diminishing marginal returns and other factors, this isn't a set in stone law, but it is a great way to get you going and to get a quick glance at which is better at a very snap decision. This is a major part of the popularity of the gatekeeper shield I'll also mention. As the 8% health comes out to 24% attack equivalent, 
which is only really challenged by Expertise Legendary Weapons and the Season of Conquest weapon, and why each value piece at Epic and below is most typically considered based on their defense and health offered. And with that, we'll wrap up our discussion on equipment. This is very much a surface level discussion. If you'd like to see more coverage of equipment, let me know down in the comments. If you want to see another topic covered, let me know down there as well, or join the Discord and suggest content there using the link in the description. But as always, good luck, fight well, and I will see you on the battlefield.